word up. Okay, so we doing this. God damn, we doing this. This guy is, uh, at first I thought he was just a chiropractor on YouTube. Brent, Brent Bender. But, uh, evidently he's also a teacher and, uh, I, don't, I don't know, wh whatever the fuck. Uh, disclaimer, nigga be lit, so, uh, deal with it. Uh, we, we doing the damn thing. <laughs> Regardless. Because that's how we do. <clears throat> real recognizes real, right? So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, shit. Essentially, this is like, what the fuck is the title? I don't know. I'll, I'll fucking post it in, in the description or, or, or whatever. But uh, essentially, it's like, you know, innovation, group mind. Uh, essentially, you know, he, he's trying to tap into... Uh, basically, on a cellular, cellular level of what happens... Whenever, uh, like, deep engagement happens and, uh, uh, deep divine contemplation happens. And how this, uh, ripple effect happens, uh, throughout the collective. So, uh, you know, we're, we're out here, uh, made to believe that we're, we're isolated or alone, or that we're only in, like, certain family units or uh, collective units, but uh, in actuality, we are, we are operating on, on uh, wavelengths and bandwidths, and this is the reasoning behind trying to call awarenesses in, uh, trying to call constructs in, to tighten uh, thought, to tighten awareness, uh, mentality. To dissect and uh, deflect the, the true isness into something that is uh, squared, boxed, and cubed but but not just cubed because uh, a, a, the cube is is simply just a geometric form so it, it's a uh, encapsulation within this cube okay so I thought going too deep into that fucking shit we're gonna say uh, our shout outs real quick. Shout out to the fucking genie. His last upload was, was dead on. Fucking gorgeous. Shout out to, uh, of course, Zen App Man. Shout out to Activation Codes. Fucking, uh. Damn. All the real motherfuckers. Fucking Skyhopper's been killing it, dude. Like, you keep you keep apologizing for uh, letting it out, but like, dude, like, we gotta we gotta let him know. So uh, I appreciate the fire. And I appreciate the uh, the balance with with the water and finding the homeostasis, finding that cinder point in the monad. Shout out to Zigzag. Shout out to fucking Danny Skylark, of course. Shout out to Angie Witchmoon. Shout out to Juniperus. Zenat Man. He's back doing his, <laughs> his silly doings. So, 
so yeah, this this guy is a fucking uh, one of the top tier chiropractic uh, people because he doesn't uh, just stick to a certain mo modality and method. He integrates. Like uh, I'm all about this integrative medicine, integrative work. And uh, uh, the refinement process that I, that I keep speaking of, and utilizing, uh, reaching our branches out, and grasping onto things, and then integrating it, refining it. This is all just a process of reaching out, reaching in. Integrating, refining, alchemizing. You may say <laughs> that you're not an alchemist, but uh, if you are a human, then you have no other choice. Because it is, it is in, in your, in your, in your very being uh, of what you are to to alchemize and to transmute your essence, your, your reality, the things that you perceive. You make into something. Uh, it, it, it's, it's your choice, what you make it into. But once you uh, gain a little bit more of a, a recognition, a recog in your awareness, Then you're able to reposition and transition yourself into a clearer point of beingness, a clearer aspect. Of uh, what it is you are observing or, or engaging or experiencing then you can integrate it on that level, a deeper level of gnosis. This is what we are talking about with the gnosis. You see things for what it is because you feel it for what it is. That's it. All okay. right. Here we go. Oh, shit. Well, maybe. Ha ha! There it is. Thank you for your attention. Because attention is a vital aspect in all of our lives. New York Times bestselling author James Redfield says, Where attention goes, energy flows. And it means... And this fucking guy out here, I'm, I'm gonna try not to use the fucking, the sling shit. God damn. It's probably gonna come out. Uh, he's, he's throwing stuff out here. He knows, you know, he's, he's gotta be professional with the fucking Ted fucking shit. So, uh, he threw out James Redfield and, oh my god, New York Times bestselling author, blah, 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 blah. But uh, James, if if they decide to look into James Redfield, blam, Celestine prophecies, my nigga. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> I just I just did it anyways. Oh my god, yes, the Celestine prophecies. Look into that shit. Look, <laughs> read at, at least read the first fucking book. God damn. That that's some uh, that's some deep level shit.
And remember that famous equation by Einstein, E equals mc squared. E is the energy, which equals m mass times c, the speed of light squared. Basically, I'm saying... This guy talks fucking fast. But, uh, basically, the shit that you're sold is fucking bullshit. Trying to, to find energy? What the, what the fuck? No. Just just contemplate that equation. How the fuck does that make any goddamn sense at all? There are uh, look into fucking cymatics. How are you going to define energy as one fucking thing and one fucking equation like that? If anything, energy is pi. Energy is a flowing thing that constantly transforms and transmutes and becomes something else, becomes something different upon your perception, what you choose to see it as, what you choose to engage it as. So energy equals what someone is going to perceive it as mixed in with what is being presented, mixed in with the final resolution, stirring the pot, and then you just you just come up with a, you know a new creation. Energy equals choice. You can you can be presented with uh, a whole bunch of different ideologies and energies and. Thoughts, and uh, you can get you can get deeper into uh, uh, vibrational energies, and then once you get deep into uh, pranayama, yogic practices, and shamanics, then you can have more of an awareness of these deeper level uh, vibrational energies, and where your choice comes into play. Choosing how to engage a certain energy. So yes, energy equals something, but but then you bring it up to the mirror. You bring it up to your perception. What do you want to do with it? Energy equals what the fuck do you want to do with it? And then it becomes something. It, and then it becomes a byproduct. Uh, of what you choose to create. Energy equals creation. Because that's what you fucking are. You. <laughs> what we are. What we out, what we out here doing. Is, is creating. In every moment. Every breath. Every vibration. Every, every murmur of the heart. We create. Every heartbeat is a creation beat. And the more that you tap back into the stillness, the more you're going to tap back into your own power and empowerment of what you are doing in every moment. Tapping back into the awareness of the body. How it is connected as within, so without. Simplifying, if you're a physicist, forgive me. The entire universe is made up of energy. And where attention goes, energy flows. Or more simply, we could just say, whatever you think about grows. So, if someone thinks about their failure, their loss, their lacking, then those thoughts will grow and create an impression of those experiences in that person's mind and in their life. But if someone thinks about their success, their achievements, their financial accumulation, then those thoughts will grow and create an impression 
of those experiences in that person's mind and in their life. Beautiful. That's absolutely accurate. But the thing is, uh, you know, you, you can see people out here talking about um, how energy and, and money and the correlation and how money is just a uh, manifestation of energy. And yes, this is true, but um, we have to go back into the causalities, the, uh, the roots, and uh, where these things stemmed from. So if you're not aware of how the flow of money works, how the system is set up, then obtaining more and more energy in the form of money, moan eye, the moon, <laughs> no, we're not going to get into that. then you're going to get more and more encapsulated and caught up in the outer manifestations of the energy. The, the, the whole purpose of money is to distract and, and extract your a fucking awareness from the quintessential essence of nature, of what you are. Your inner and outer nature and your connection with that. That is the sole purpose of money. Why the fuck would you need money if you're in a society? A, uh, a family? Uh, a, A connection with others where you freely trade and give and receive in kind what is there is no purpose for money in these kinds of uh, civilizations uh, it's not the word uh, communities money is a money is exactly the same thing as religion and, and it's a middleman it's the middle it's the thing that that draws your attention away from what is true inside of you Oh, hey, look out here. We have the answer. We have the word of God out here. Invest your awareness and interest in us. There's no coincidence here why you pay attention. You are interested in certain things and you have to pay interest this is all within the spells and the spellings and the banks and the rivers and the fucking how the money flows how the attention and the awareness goes and how it's being eddied and redirected now into a pure positioning. Now, first up, financial accumulation. New York Times best-selling author Napoleon Hill says in the title of his book, <laughs> Think and Grow Rich. Because if you 
want to grow rich, you're probably going to have to think a little bit. Most people don't just wake up one day financially independent without having invested some kind of time or thought energy into their finances. Ah, well, uh, motherfucker, that's not true. Because unfortunately, most, most fucking people who... Encourage the flow of the Moni. Have them brought up into it. And they have no kind of awareness of uh, the layers below them or above them. Besides of what they are, the, what they are told to believe in. And this just taps it right back into uh, what money is and uh, what, what is a uh, what it, it is a bastardization of, which is just awareness. It's uh, trying to uh, encapsulate energy. The sole purpose of money is for enslavement. If you don't believe that, you don't need to believe that. If you don't, if you don't realize that, then you haven't dived down deep enough inside of yourself to see things for how they really are. You don't need to take anyone's word for anything. All that is needed is for you to dive down deep into what you truly are. And then you will start to wake up little by little. Or maybe it just burst by burst. And you will start to see things for how they really are. And it's not a it's not a pretty fucking process. Yeah, you can start to wake up and, and engage yourself with them um, being immersed in nature and just going out into the woods and the wild. And re-engaging. And yes, you have to do this. You need to do this. But you also need to realize where you are at. The, the mentality, the reality of what's going on collectively. And, and don't get caught up in any one modality. You have to keep... Swimming back and forth. It's a uh, it's a yin and yang. It's it's the infinity symbol. Okay, keep going back and forth, back and forth, and finding that center point in the monad. And keep swimming and keep refining and redefining your own reality. So, if you're, if you're not already comfortably financially dependent, then you may have to think differently about your finances because money is all about attention. That's why it's called paying attention. It's because focus is a type of energetic currency. Yep. Except focus is more valuable than money itself. Because exactly. with focus, you can earn more money, but you can also attract influence and opportunity. With focus, you Beautiful. can be more humorous in the moment. Beautiful. A better listener, a better lover, a better friend, a better teacher, a better parent, a better innovator. Human. Now, of course, money is not everything. They say the first wealth is health. Napoleon Hill also... <sighs> your health is... <laughs> your wealth, because it's going to define m many things in the long run. says, the devil lives in the unoccupied spaces of your mind. In 10 years of private practice, I've noticed 
that many unhealthy behaviors, not all, but many unhealthy behaviors exist because of a lack of attention. Whether That's beautiful. And like I've said, you know, in the blind spots is where we are manipulated. So this is why I am all about empowerment and becoming a, having a 360 full spectrum awareness. Finding your weak points, finding your blind spots, putting your awareness into that. And it is a process and it's, it's not always a uh, enjoyable process but it is a uh, it is a must <laughs> it is it is essential if you want to free yourself you have to bring your awareness and pay attention And uh, retransition how you you used to go about things. It's a lack of attention the underlying emotions that cause the unhealthy behavior or a lack of focus in the moment that someone is making the decision to act in an unhealthy way or a lack of attention to how the body feels after someone makes an unhealthy decision. Either way, it's a lack of attention. So if you're not as healthy as you want to be, you may have to think differently about health. No. That's beautiful. Uh, not, not may have to, you, you absolutely have to change your perspective, your vantage point. From what you have been led to believe about nutrition and health, into uh, what, what you engage yourself, what you experiment and experience yourself. And you may come to find that less is more in many, many aspects of life. Less is more. A refined center point, a refined focal point is greatly, vastly more than the expansion. Because within this focal point, within this monad, within this center, within this nothing, within the no thing, within the darkness, the spark of light, the spark of awareness, the moment of creation can be accessed and tapped into. And then you have the option to transform your whole reality and mentality. Depending upon how deep you are willing to go inside, how deep you are willing to dive into the darkness, into the depths of your beingness, past the scripts and the linguistics, past the syntax, into the felt experience, into the direct engagement of self, of isness. That is where you will experience your true answers, your true ancestry. The questions become the answers And the answers offer more stems and branches for you to engage. Of course, health and wealth aren't everything. 
maybe there's something even more important, possibly happiness. There's a great story about when John Lennon was in grade school. I wasn't there. I just heard the story. And the teacher... Ha, ha, ha. That's what I'm saying. Like... Perception. Like, what, what is everything that we're out here uh, perceiving? They're just stories. Were you there? Were you there for, to perceive it for yourself? Most likely not. So why, why are you going to go and, and jump to the next step of believing? Oh, I'll tell you why. Because you were fucking indoctrinated into doing so. Other people, your, your quote-unquote teachers, taught you indoctrination. They taught you to believe in a lie. They taught you to believe in something that you don't know for yourself if it's factual or not. But they taught it as if it was. This, this education system is an indoctrination system. There are, there are few actual teachers out here. And if you ever find yourself among the one, amongst a true teacher who, who wants to only offer, offer up something, for your contemplation and not tell you how it is then consider yourself lucky because that's very few and far between nowadays how people engage with one another how people commune and, and interact with one, one another it's very rare that they engage in an, un, an unindoctrinated way Unless you can tap into the real, the, the direct feeling. And then people can begin to, uh, or, or, or even momentarily, give up the indoctrination and go back into the direct feeling and the connection that's happening. Because that's where the true learning happens, is within the connection of whatever you're experiencing. It's within the connection. I asked John, what do you want to be in life? And he said, I'd like to be happy. And the teacher said, no, 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 John, I don't think you understand the question. And John Lennon said, well, then I don't think you understand life. Hell yeah. And, and that's what, that's what you should be, that's what you should be out here doing. Like, these people trying to tell you, Oh no, this is reality. Oh, you just don't understand. Well, not only do I understand, I understand your misunderstanding. So let's take it a little deeper. Or, if you're going to be so fucking offended and triggered, then you can go fuck yourself. Cause I'm not, I'm not gonna be involved in that shit. Like maybe I'll do it just for fun and defend and trigger you so that we can see how deep we can go. It's, we we can see if we, you can transcend and transmute your garbage bullshit, offended, triggered, stupid, maniacal, crazy fucking shit. Yeah, I'll engage that to see if you can transcend it. But, it, but if you're so dug in like a tick and attached, dug in, then, uh, <laughs> then either we're going to have some real fun or you can go fuck off. Either way, it is what it is. I'm going to have fun either way. Because you're not going to sway me. Into your bullshit. You see, John was thinking differently. Thinking differently is good. Thinking differently is also considered thinking outside of the box. 
thinking differently is good. Just thinking, like, just fucking awareness, like, the, yeah. what, what, this is, this is the, the problem with, with, uh, jumping, jumping from one thing to another, and then, uh, leapfrogging, and oftentimes people skip steps, and they don't realize what they're jumping and skipping from one thought to the, to the next, Awareness is good. Thinking in a certain mentality to where you can think for yourself. But uh, you know, thinking for yourself is becoming more and more rare and Essentially, like, the media is trying to, uh, encapsulate, um, the entrainment in, in, within the entertainment and, uh, have people tap into a, uh, collective group think of, uh, indoctrination, but, um, the waves that that is happening is being, um, pushed and pulled with the waves of people actually feeling what is inside of them. So it's just a uh, push and pull of this collective garbage and the people waking up. The key to thinking outside the box is first to understand what, what the boxes box is. you're already in. Most of us here are in some kind of box, somehow, some way. I'm sure a lot of people here just this morning. Um, how about the goddamn building that they're in? You woke up on your box spring mattress, reached over, hit a button on your alarm box, got out of bed, got into the box that shoots water at you, poured soap out of a fine looking box, washed off, rinsed off, got out, dried off, got dressed, Put little boxes on your feet, went out to your kitchen, packed up your lunch box, left your house box, got into your box with wheels, drove down the street listening to music on the boom box, paying attention to boxes hanging from the sky with lights in them, until you arrived at your work box, which is filled with smaller boxes, where most of us here are paying attention to the all-seeing, all-knowing, touchscreen, Wi-Fi-enabled smart box. Smart box. That's filled with smaller boxes called apps. You guys thought I was going to say Democrat or Republican, didn't you? Regardless of your box. <laughs> that was fucking beautiful. But I mean, there's there's so many boxes that he missed that 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 he didn't dive into, and uh, this is cradle to grave. You're you're born, and you're put inside of a box and. You you die and you go into a fucking coffin box, and all these boxes that he mentioned there, you know, boxes on your feet, boxes everywhere, is to box your mentality, to cut you off, to cut your awareness off, physically, with with the natural world. And this is essentially what money uh, was designed to do is to cut you off, to, to dissect awareness. But, money is becoming a very uh, more fluid thing. So, it is up to the individual how they utilize their money and their awareness and how they choose to integrate, how they choose to see what money really is, how it correlates back into awareness, what are you truly paying for, what are you buying into,
unbox your mind, unbox your perceptions. Pay it forward, yeah. Pay it inward, for sure. Boxes, it doesn't matter. These boxes aren't a bad thing. They just require us to pay attention. They require a certain level of awareness. They're not a bad thing because there's no good or bad. But there is a better, there is a good, better, and best. And boxes certainly aren't the best. Boxes are a form within the cymatic and vibrational world, and they are a form that is there to be built upon, not encapsulated within. Okay? Build upon the form. Do not get stuck within the box mindset that you've been led to believe is reality. This, so that we can maintain healthy, balanced relationships with all of our boxes, regardless of what they are. Now, let's take everything I just... Eh. <laughs> no, no. These boxes... Um... And like I just said, like the healthy, balanced relationship is going to be transcending the boxes. <sighs> Vibrationally shifting from one s s set of beingness, uh, state of mind, into the other. The one becomes the two, becomes the triune, and then you have the box, and then... You keep transitioning and transforming geometrically. The pentagram the octagon you keep transitioning and transforming you don't stick and stay transitioned into one mindset and this is the whole fucking purpose of the indoctrination system and the bleh, indoctrination system think back about how your whole schooling think back about the the shapes and the symbols that you were indoctrinated into drawing and coloring within the lines Lines within lines, within boxes, within shapes. Listening to what you're told, regurgitating what you were told. Break free of this. These are the chains that bind the mind. Allow your mind. To run wild. What, whatever manifestation needs to happen. Will happen. Um, don't get caught up in. Hmm, this, is, this is like layer upon layer upon layer here. Don't get caught up in the manifestations of what you need to do. To free yourself. Because you may find yourself in circumstances or in engagements where um, you engage certain things, certain plant spirit medicines, certain modalities that uh, from the outside looking in, it may you know, not look good or, or what the fuck ever good is. But Within that engagement, within that extreme engagement that you have with whatever you're doing, you may have a glimpse at something that leads you into 
a deep inner standing. So just recognize this. There's no good or bad. There just is. Okay? If, you, if you're doing the worst... If you're like doing a, the worst fucking kind of drug or what the fuck ever, but you're doing it in the engagement and the awareness that I am learning from this, then you're going to transcend it. If you're within the awareness of transcendence, then you're going to learn from it and transcend it. And there are many, many people who are, who are doing this right now and transcending the reality of being addicted to a certain mentality. And shout out to you, motherfuckers. Because you're doing more than you fucking know with your transcendence. Keep diving within. Don't get caught up without in the outer manifestations. Keep going within. That's going to be your freedom. That's going to be how you break your chains. Set. And we'll put it over here in a box. Let's come over here and talk about innovation. In 1922, historians William Ogburn and Dorothy Thomas. Yep, we're going to skip a little bit here. See what to going sustain on. and develop their ideas for the betterment of humanity. And those people are in the room right now. Quickly, let's give them a round of applause, real quick. Talking about everyone. And when someone is focused on an idea that is still developing, it moves the energy into the form of innovation. Now, let's review a little bit. Where attention goes, energy flows. That's like output on the individual level. And the phenomenon of simultaneous discovery. That's like input on relatively the individual level. Do you think it's possible that we could measure the effects of an entire group of people who are all paying attention to the same thing. Well, well, if you're not doing anything, I've got about seven more minutes. Seven, of course. In the year 1979, Princeton University <laughs> built the Engineering Anomalous Research Laboratory, and they began investigating whether or not special states of consciousness could affect very sensitive machines. The machines that they used were called random number generators. These machines have one purpose. That's to generate random numbers. It's all in so yeah, I'll end it there. Uh, essentially, what he's getting at is these random number generators uh, are affected by consciousness and uh, um, influenced by awareness. But uh, there's this once I heard that, there's just many layers to it. Uh, many layers to the machines that can pick up on consciousness and awareness. Um, what is outer world? What is inner world? But it all comes back down to consciousness and awareness and how how the uh, the agenda is to distract you from how from how magnificent you are as a creation. I don't give a fuck who you are if you're listening to this. If you happen to make it to this point, you are fucking amazing. Beyond your imagining, your your beingness, the very fact that you are able to engage how you engage, to be. That is the magic. That is the purity and the clarity within the purity of how beautiful you are will release 
anything and everything that you may think you're caught up within. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I'll read from the card that I pulled here to end this. And that's synchronistic on so many levels anyways, because, uh, the seals, the fucking seals, dude, the pressures engaging the within and without, the push and the pull, the fucking pressures, repressurizing your systems. Allowing your seals to relubricate and function properly and you gotta you gotta fucking recognize that every every little fucking thing in your body is a seal. And that's how it operates. It's off and on. It's push and pull. So if your seals are loose, then you're going to have a loose flow of energy and awareness. And you're going to have a lack of energy. So you have to tighten your fucking seals so that you can re-engage the isness and what the fucking... <laughs> What your fucking body does. And do and do this naturally. But uh, you can utilize things. Like plant spirit medicines. To help you realize what is inside of you. But you have to put in the fucking work yourself. Seal. Keywords. Transformation. Shapeshifting. Temptation. Many say that the seal inspired the folklores of the mermaid. These beliefs may have originated because when you viewed from a distance a seal basking on the rocks can look almost human in form. This is perspective, perception, clearing our perspectives, clearing our perception and our awareness, seeing things for how they really are, how this shit really works. The Inuit of Greenland in northern Canada often depicted Sidna. The all-powerful goddess of the sea as a seal. Some families living on the Orkney and Shetland Islands in the North Sea 
claim to be a descendant from shape-shifting seals called Selkies. Legend says that long ago a fisherman saw a Selkie shed her seal skin on the beach and transform into a lovely girl dazzled by her beauty. He stole her seal skin and wed her, trapping her in her human form. When the couple had been married ten years, the husband decided the Selkie had been a wife and a mother so long as she would have no desire to return to the sea. He gave her the seal skin when she asked for it. Oh, oh no, I missed the page. We have to find the page. But the call of the sea was too strong for her to resist. With a gasp of joy, the sulky wife ran to the shore, drew the skin around her, and dove into the ocean. A seal forevermore. Just as the Selkie was transformed from seal to woman and back again, the seal card invo invites and invokes you to look for instances of transformation in your life. How can you shift? your shape to better your circumstances. What a beautiful fucking card. Transform your reality by transforming your mentality of what you had been led to believe is real. You redefine what is real. And that creates reality and uh, you go deeper and deeper into the layers into the rabbit hole when you realize every vibration every thought that you have creates the reality that you reflect without and then you choose what you want to engage with them and that further creates another reality realities within realities upon realities it all comes back to mentalities so yeah I'll, I'll leave a link to this uh, guy and hopefully you guys check him out uh, he's a amazing chiropractor uh, really opened my eyes to what true chiropractic uh, healing can can be can be <laughs> can 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 but uh also uh, just a holistic viewpoint of not just like chiropractic medicine but also transitioning repositioning the body and the mind realizing why your body is reflecting what is in your mind choosing to flow in a manner that allows healing that allows release of the things that need to be released
So let it in and let it flow and let it go. Peace.